Hey, it's Brock here from Rock Hill Farms. And in yesterday's video, I showed you my new Ram 2500 Laramie. Today, I got a gooseneck trailer for it. Obviously, my whole plan has focused around having more capabilities to haul bigger equipment. That required a bigger truck and a bigger trailer, but there was no point in getting the trailer till I had the truck. So, now I'm gonna show you everything about the trailer I picked. Now with the truck, I went kind of premium and got all the bells and whistles on it. On the trailer, I went for a very basic trailer that's just going to do the job I need it to do, which is haul equipment. Let's go take a look. So as I get ready to tell you about this, I honestly don't even know the manufacturer. I'm gonna walk around to the other side, see if there's a label with the manufacturer on it. Yeah, I don't see it on there. I bought this from Central Arkansas Trailer Sales. I actually drove a long way to get it because this is by far the least expensive trailer I could find with the weight rating and the size that I need. And I understood I wasn't buying a premium trailer, but I think it's gonna do a good job. One thing that makes this a little bit cheaper trailer is my understanding of it is having these side rails. Most of your gooseneck trailers don't have side rails. That's a convenient feature because it lets you set things over the side. But it's cheaper to construct it this way. If you need a certain level of strength, you can build that strength more cost effective with this design. The next way that this is a less expensive trailer is the ramps. They're a very basic ramp. Let's go back there and fold the ramps down. I'll show you how they work. This is a very basic setup. It's kind of a narrow ramp. It's got some ability to slide for different width equipment, but you just swivel this pin and the ramps drop down. They are spring assist, so they're really easy to lift. The next way I saved money on this trailer is with a single jack in the center. A lot of times you'll have two jacks, you'll have hydraulic jacks, hydraulic tilt bed, all kinds of really nice options, but I'm not looking to spend $25,000 on a trailer. This one was just under $8,000, and I feel a lot more comfortable about that after just buying the truck. This is a similar jack to what I have on my dump trailer. It's got the drop stand, you pull the arm out, and it springs up, you push that down and drop the pin in. It's got a crank handle right here. Wow. We've got a big ice storm coming. That's already got ice on it. So I didn't even know it had really started yet. But I need to get this out of the driveway. So let's get hooked up to it, get the tractor loaded, see how it goes. I've hit this button right here. That's gonna lower the truck a couple inches to make it easier to drive under the ball. And whenever I put it in reverse with the tailgate down, it's giving me a warning. I've gotta turn the rear parking sensor off so it'll quit beeping. Now I can line up there, but what I want is this cargo camera. I think I don't need it to be lowered, so I'm gonna bring it back up and that will give me a better angle to see if I'm lined up. I spent a lot of time doing price shopping and feature comparison on trailers, and it's kind of like buying the truck. I started off with a base price that a trailer like this was gonna cost me at least $10,000. Then as I continued to look at more features, the price just kept climbing. If I wanted two hydraulic jacks on the trailer, might have been 12,000 or if I wanted it longer, or if I wanted a nicer style of ramps on the back, a full tilt deck, a partial hydraulic tilt deck. The features just go on and on, and at a certain point I was looking at trailers that cost $25,000, and I just can't do that. So my question for you guys that might have had a few different gooseneck trailers over the years is, did I sacrifice too much on features, and are these issues I'm about to show you Game changers or no big deal? Okay, this is one I've never seen before. I don't know if the springs are just wound too tight on those ramps, 
but whenever I was there I didn't have anything to load or check it with so I just let it down but I didn't want to bend down and pick it up so I let it down about halfway and stood it back up so that works they don't want to go all the way down with gravity you can push them down but they pop back up so I'll have to call the manufacturer tomorrow or the salesman ask him about that for now it's got a rock I'm gonna stick in between there to weigh it down All right, I've got the tractor warmed up. First time loading, see how it goes. So I've kind of explained some of the things I sacrificed on when I bought the trailer that had me a little bit concerned. Number one is only having one jack in the front. Do you think that is a big problem or no big deal? The second thing is these ramps. I don't understand why they're not going down. Maybe, hopefully, all you guys tell me that new trailers can be like that and over time that stretches out and it's not a problem anymore. However, I do have two other complaints about these ramps. Number one is not that big of a deal because it's kind of what I bargained for, but they're hard to slide over. You have to take them loose and take a pin out, and then it's just difficult to slide. The second thing that seems like more of a big deal is right after I left the dealership and I'm pulling my first ever gooseneck, I ran over a curb, and the bouncing made the ramp come unlatched and drop. There's a possibility that it was never latched properly, and maybe even I didn't latch it properly, but that's obviously not something you want to have. So just let me know in the comments what you think about the trailer I bought for $8,000 compared to a more expensive version. I could have moved that ramp over a little bit more to center up on the tire. I was just being lazy. So we're way under the load rating of the truck and trailer both. So there's obviously no squat at all. Looks like I need to be back a little bit more because my machine weight is centered on the front axle instead of in between them. Even though the stump grinder weighs about a thousand pounds, that shifts some more weight back. I think to haul it, I would back up just a little bit more. As it is, I don't have anywhere to go today. I said earlier, we were about to have an ice storm. So I'm gonna get this unloaded and then go park the trailer, go inside and get warm. I appreciate you taking time to watch. You'll see links to more of our videos right here, and I'll see you next time.